This is the brand new Apple Watch Series 10. And in today's video, we're gonna find out if the Apple Watch Series 10 is worth your money and whether it's worth an upgrade over the Apple Watch Series 9. A lot of people were thinking that the Apple Watch Series 10 was gonna be a huge leap over any of the previous Apple Watches and would be the next generation of Apple Watch. And well, I guess that's fine. And there are definitely some improvements on this Apple Watch over the previous years. It's not like a brand new Apple Watch. It's not gonna completely change the way that you think about Apple Watches. In fact, the leap from the Apple Watch Series 9 to the Series 10 can't even really be classified as a leap. It's more of like a, a skip over a small ditch or brook. That said though, it's still an excellent watch and why don't we find out whether the Apple Watch Series 10 is worth your money. So why don't we start things off with the design? And at first glance, you might think, how is that any different than the Apple Watch Series 9? One of the most noticeable changes to me is that the Apple Watch Series 10 is not only thinner, but also lighter. And those are two things that you notice when you're actually wearing this on your wrist all day long. According to Apple, it's 10% thinner than the previous Apple Watch, and that's something that you can actually notice holding them up next to each other. And if you get the aluminum version, which is the version I have here, it's 10% lighter. The more premium version of the Apple Watch Series 10 is no longer steel, and it's now titanium, and apparently it's 20% lighter than the previous Apple Watch, so there are some pretty big weight savings there. I guess big when it comes to percentages, the actual weight difference is not that big. For me, the change that I actually notice is the thinness of this Apple Watch. It feels better on the wrist, it looks better on the wrist, it doesn't pop off as much, it's nice. Another pretty big change is the brand new screen. The screen is now bigger than the Apple Watch Series 9 and is around the same size as the Apple Watch Ultra 2. Which, by the way, stay tuned and hit that subscribe button if you haven't yet because I've got a review of the Apple Watch Ultra 2 coming in the next couple days. I haven't actually reviewed it yet. And I recently bought the titanium older version, which is just the standard version. There is no newer version other than a new color. And I'm gonna give you guys a review after using it for a couple months. Another relatively large change on this Apple Watch Series 10 is that the back of the device now comes in almost all metal. It used to have a ceramic and sapphire crystal back which made it a two-part construction. Now it's just all one piece of metal all the way around the side of the device. And of course you've still got that sapphire crystal bump right there which pushes into your arm and reads all your different biometrics and things like that. Another somewhat minor but kind of nice difference is that they changed the speaker grill. Apparently the speaker is now 30% smaller to fit in the smaller case. And they changed up the speaker grill from a line with an internal speaker grill to now it looks like these tiny little machine holes in the side of the device that actually look really, really nice and are very difficult to see unless you hit them with the right light. It makes the speaker design a lot more subtle and I actually really, really like that. Speaking of the speakers, now on the Apple Watch Series 10, you can listen to music from your Apple Watch, not through your headphones, out of the Apple Watch. Why anyone would do that, really don't know, but you can do it. Doesn't sound great, but uh, it sounds just fine. In fact, let me give you guys a sample. It's not bad, it's just quiet little distorted. I guess it's nice to have if you're going on like a hike or something and you forgot your headphones and you're by yourself. That would be the only situation I'd see myself actually using that feature, but it's there if you want to use it. Another change is that the Apple Watch Series 10 now has a water temperature sensor. So if you do swimming and diving and things like that, you can sense the temperature of your watch. Now, if you are a diver, you wouldn't want to get the Series 10. You'd instead want to get the Ultra 2. The Apple Watch Series 10 was not made for diving. It was really only made for snorkeling. You can't go that deep with it. But you can check the temperature of the water that you're in if you want to, if a field test isn't good enough for you. I know I'm being kind of sarcastic, but genuinely one of the changes that I do really like on this device is the brand new OLED display. It's LTPO3. It's actually the newest display on any Apple Watch. The Apple Watch Ultra 2 has the LTPO2 display, which I think only goes down to 10 hertz. The Series 10 LTPO3 display actually goes all the way down to 1 hertz, so you can actually still see the seconds hand when it's in uh, always on display mode. Pretty cool feature, and the battery life is slightly better than last year's version. Speaking of battery life, Apple claims that the Series 10 has 18 hours of day to day use and 36 hours of low power mode. I found that this thing lasts me about a day from right in the morning to the end of the day, especially if I've used it for working out and just walking around and answering text messages and things like that. Generally, I'd get about a day and then I'd sleep in it and then actually charge it when I'm showering, and it wasn't bad. I never really felt like I was running out of battery, especially when I figured out sort of a charging rhythm. It kind of worked with my schedule. No issues there whatsoever. And actually, that brings up another thing I like about the Series 10 is that the new charging puck that they give you with the Apple Watch Series 10, the puck actually can charge up your Apple Watch to, I believe, 80% is what Apple says in 30 minutes, which is pretty fast. But I have heard other people have varying results with that, so keep that in mind. That being said, it is faster than the previous puck that you got with your previous Apple Watches. So overall, better technology, faster charging. It's nice. And like I said, I found myself charging it when I'm getting ready in the morning, when I'm showering, when I'm getting my clothes on, all sort of good stuff. And it's usually around 80 to 100% depending on how long I was able to charge it for. The Apple Watch Series 10 now comes with the S10 chip, which apparently is better. Not sure exactly how. I didn't notice any performance differences personally. And again, I didn't notice anyone else having performance differences. I'm sure in the future, they'll create apps and things that will utilize this S10 chip better than it's being utilized currently. 
But uh, I mean, if you're grabbing it for the new chip, that's really not a great reason to grab it. Of course, being an Apple Watch, it still does very Apple Watch things. You've got all your favorite apps, all your favorite features. It now includes sleep apnea detection, uh, which I believe is also gonna be brought to the Apple Watch Series 9. I don't think it's even on the Apple Watch Series 10 yet. I don't think it's been approved and pushed yet but it's something that will happen eventually. Actually, almost all the software improvements that are available on the Apple Watch Series 10 are also available on the Apple Watch Series 9. So I think the main reason to grab this is really for the new design, which of course is thinner and lighter and also comes in new colors like this one, the jet black color, which is very similar to what you had on the iPhone 7, which was like a wild looking iPhone. It was like this sort of glassy black material. It's the same exact look and finish. Now, I don't know how much this is gonna scratch up over time. I haven't really been able to use it for more than a week, but uh, I will say, it's I'm serious recording everything I'm saying. I will say that uh, it looks really, really cool. Very futuristic. And one thing I'll say about it is that because the screen has these black edges, it kind of melts into the side of the uh, black metal device, which I think looks really, really cool. Very difficult to see the seam between the screen and the rest of the watch. It looks like a very smooth pebble or something like that. It's cool. I really like it a lot. Of course, there are other aluminum color options, rose, gold, and silver. And the price point for the aluminum watches starts at $399 for the 42 millimeter version, and then $429 for the 46 millimeter version, which I have here. And of course, you can add cellular to these, which will add $100 to the price, so $499 and $529. You can, however, upgrade to the titanium case, which comes in slate, gold, and natural. It is a stronger case and a lighter case, but it is more expensive. The 42 millimeter version comes in at 699 and the 46 millimeter version comes in at 749, but both of these versions do come with cellular. I'll be honest though, when you're paying that much money, it's a hard sell not to get the Ultra 2, in my opinion, because I have the Ultra 2. I actually bought it on Amazon for like 689 new. Uh, so spending $10 more for a titanium case Standard Apple Watch just doesn't seem like it makes a lot of sense when the Apple Watch Ultra 2 is already titanium. I should mention that the aluminum version of the watch comes with an Ion X display, which is durable, but it can scratch, whereas the titanium versions do come with a sapphire crystal display, which is a lot stronger. On the Series 10, Apple has upped the brightness of this watch to 2000 nits, which is solid, more than you need, especially for a little watch, even when you're outside. But now let's get to whether I think the Apple Watch Series 10 is worth the upgrade over the Apple Watch Series 9 or worth getting over the Apple Watch Ultra 2. The Apple Watch Series 10 is a really great incremental improvement over the Apple Watch Series 9. It's a great watch overall. If you've used Apple watches, you kind of know what you're getting yourself into with this watch. But to be honest, the Apple Watch Series 9 is also a really great watch and you can get it for $100 cheaper than the Apple Watch Series 10. There are definitely some nice minor improvements on the Apple Watch Series 10. There's some new colors like this jet black color, which is pretty cool. But are they worth the extra $100? It's kind of up to you. So if you're stuck deciding between the Apple Watch Series 9 and the Series 10, it really depends if you're willing to spend the extra $100. I don't know if it's worth it. I don't know if it's necessary, but if you want the latest, newest thing and you want the thinner, sleeker, lighter version of the Apple Watch, then definitely get the 10. If, however, you already have an Apple Watch Series 9, I don't think this is worth the upgrade personally. I definitely don't think it's worth getting rid of your old Apple Watch, probably at a loss of a couple hundred bucks, and then spending even more money to get the 10, when you just, it's just not that big of an improvement. And then the Apple Watch Ultra 2 comes into the equation, which is a one-year-old device, and they haven't really upgraded it this year except for adding a new color. This watch is definitely more expensive at around $799, basically 800 bucks, but, if you're buying the titanium version of the Apple Watch Series 10, you've gotta know that this watch is better in almost every single way. So in my opinion, there is absolutely no reason to get the Apple Watch Series 10 in titanium unless you really want the look of the Apple Watch Series 10 over the Ultra 2. The Ultra 2 is just a better all-around watch in a lot of ways. It's a lot more expensive, but when you get the titanium version of the Series 10, the price is very, very similar. So I would say, if you're trying to decide between these two, titanium or the Ultra 2, Go Ultra 2. Although I think this watch is better overall, there are some minor improvements on the 10, like a newer screen, but it's not that different. If you're deciding between the Ultra 2 and the standard 10 titanium, I just wouldn't do it. So in my opinion, the Apple Watch Series 10 is absolutely worth it if you're buying it as a new Apple Watch owner or someone who hasn't upgraded your Apple Watch in like three years. Obviously, it's an excellent watch. Apple Watches are the best smart watches on the market, at least in my opinion. And I think if you don't have an Apple Watch or you wanna upgrade your Series 7 or 8, the Apple Watch Series 10 is a great way to go. However, if you have a nine or an Ultra 2, I don't know why you downgrade from an Ultra 2 to a Series 10, but you could if you wanted to. The 10 just isn't worth the extra money. It's great, it's a nice upgrade, but it's not enough of an upgrade to make it worth the extra couple hundred bucks. But hey, at this point, I would love to know your thoughts on the Apple Watch Series 10, whether you've grabbed one, whether you're thinking about upgrading to one. Let me know all those thoughts in the comment section down below. Thank you all so much for watching. Make sure to sub if you haven't yet, and I'll see you all in the next one.